Hey, you there. Thank you for watching, and welcome to Forge Alliance Forever. Today, I have a 5v5 custom match here on the most amazing Naraxxus map generator. So let's go ahead and introduce our teams and our players, starting up with Team 1 here in the northwest section of the map, ending with Team 2 in the southeast section of said map. Starting off with the southernmost player of Team 1, it is Reg Mex Offender going first land as a Seraphim. He is in Light Oak Tan, and he is the highest red player on Team 1 as an 1800. To his north in Glow in the Dark Green, we have the player of Chuckle Buns going first land as a UEF. Most likely going to be focusing on air in this position. He is a 1400, and again, he is UEF as glow in the dark green and the other green player for team one in emerald green we have cool hand luke 45 going first land as another uef for his team he is of course nearby the player of chuckle bun so he will probably go air as well in the rear for team one he is an 800 and again he is an emerald green as a uef and to his east moving around the map we have signal runner going first land as a cyber and he is in snow white and he is a 1400 and last but not least for team one here on the eastern side of their lineup we have box of guns very interesting name here we have first land as a seraphim he is in rust and he is an 1100 so for team one's faction makeup we have two UEF 2, Seraphim 1, Cybern, no Aeon players for Team 1. Let's go ahead and introduce the most northern player of Team 2. It is the Chevy Crimson player of Kandanker going first, second, third, fourth, fifth land. He is a 1,000 rated player, and again, he is going UEF. Do his south in Amethyst Purple. Sorry, not in Royal Purple. Apologies. Is the player of Han Solo going first land. As the first Aeon player to appear in this game, he is a 1300, and I wonder whether or not he will shoot first. To his southeast, the other Royal player on, player on Team 2, it is Ares 24, going first land as a Cybern in Royal Blue, and he is an 800. In the rearguard air slot, at least for Team 2, we have the player of Raw Legit, going first land as a Seraphim. He is in lightest red pink. And again, he is a 1600. And last but not least, the highest rated player in all the land here in this game. It is the Calm of Orb going first, land second, air in orange to color orange as a UEF. And again, he is a 2100 rated player. And let's take a look at the reclaim so far. Uh oh, before that, for a racial makeup for Team 2, we have two UEF, a Seraphim, a Cybern, and an Aeon. All of the races represented for Team 1 with a double major in UEF. Take a look at the reclaim so far. 12,385, probably was about 12 and a half before the game officially started. So, you know, 1,200 reclaim per player is not anything to scoff at. I think that's about as much as was on the map yesterday. But still, you know, you got to go out and get the reclaim. You got to get that early mash. You got to get the early mass points. Speaking of which, there is a lot of mass points here. In the middle, middle-ish section of the map, we have one, two, three groups of four mass points and then a double group of three mass points here to the east. Does look like there is an early Selen going after this engineer who wants to go after the Mexes and then obviously keep going northward to try to grab what he can. Actually, no, that is actually from Team 1's perspective. Sorry, Team 2's. We have this engineer is going to build a couple of facilities and then go for these land ones as well but unfortunately the Selen will if he notices him will kill him preventing him from completing his build order but in terms of other mass points that are kind of contested I'd say these four in the middle are in the most like hot bedded for contention they're in the middle of the map multiple units from different uh, players are going to probably collide here in the middle and that's really about it been a couple like a string of maps from the map generator that have been pretty much you get your mass i get my mass and we'll just duke it out instead of fighting over mass points so kind of an interesting layout here for the map generator of course it isn't a full 20 by 20 it's more of like a 17 16 maybe yeah, i'd say 16 that sounds about right we do have drops here from team one and team two on this upper plateau it looks like due to the fact that team one's player of reg mex offender dropped it a little bit closer to team two side of things the little ghetto gunship here with a mech marine on board, we'll be able to take out those engineers and whittle down that transport. So unfortunately here, 
Team 1 is not able to establish a foothold. A bomber isn't going to do a whole lot, but it will go for the engineer down here, preventing the construction of the land facility. So a good little tit for tat here in the southwest. But the bomber does not drop its bombs, doesn't get close enough, and Team 2 will protect that. got to hurt. You not only lost the you know upper plateau advantage, but you also lost the chance of denying some land facilities here for Team 2's highest rated player of Orb. We did see a bomber over the top get a group of engineers, but that's all that he got. There's some early harass. Nice jester harass as well. There's not a lot of AA on the field so far, but there is some on its way with only 350 hit points. That thing is not going to last very long with dual AA guns shooting at it. You can see they are direct fire weapons. No uh, flak style of guns or weapon systems on those units. And there goes that jester onto the ground. Does look like Team 1 side of things from the player of Box of Guns. Establishing a nice foothold here around the western side of this little tiny pond here. Maybe we'll see something here. Maybe we won't see something here. I don't think we'll see something here just due to the fact that it's just so small and can't affect a whole lot. At the most, you could probably get Kanda can Danker's base, but that's really about it. Not really a whole lot really worth it investing in naval facilities in this game at least. Maybe if there was, you know, a bigger pond here in the middle, maybe, but I don't see that happening anytime soon. Group of units out here from Sigma Runner making their way eastward, trying to get and pull a fast one here on the player of Can Danker, go for his main production facility, or just sit there, you know, completely ignore what I'm saying as the caster and just sit. It is a nice opportunity, but those units aren't really doing anything in the comm from Han Solo coming in to intercept. And it doesn't look like, oh, those units are given the order, but they're given the order to retreat. Definitely a missed opportunity here. But the calm to the north of Box of Guns doing a nice job of eliminating those early mexes here from and Danker. And, man, he is, you know, going to lose his radar as well. His calm is nearby. The calm of Box of Guns is no is nearby. The only advantage here for Can Danker is he has a little bit more hit points than his opponent. But in the terms of a murder-suicide situation, that is only, it's not really going to matter. It just really isn't. Unless the units from Team 2 can take out a decent hit points on Team 1's player box of guns. But it doesn't look like at the current moment it's going to happen. He's going to leave with this commander, get some nice veterancy on it, and stay the course. Units that we saw earlier are now moving eastward, coming to, I don't know, sit there for now, I guess. They're not doing anything to engage. They could come, go after facilities, delay the reinforcements here for Can Danker. Can Danker will essentially be forced in the water. There's a T2 Corsair on the field. Here from Team 2, but there's some flak, there's, there's some AA in the area, so that Corsair isn't really doing a whole lot. Bombs are dropped, so going after the secondary units down here. There is a PD about to come online. Will Box of Guns stop it? Overcharges, takes out most of those hit points. And a Tham, and another Tham will take out those engineers. And Kane Nicker is being pushed back into his main base. We do see the player of Han Solo pushing forward in the middle. We have some build up here in the southwest section of the map, but that's really about it. This is the main area of contention here for the game at 8 minutes and 22 seconds. Kane Dicker is being chased by Zooey's and by Thams. He's doing his bestest to hold off this push. There is one PD online. Kane Dicker crosses southward, but intercepts the overcharge from Box of Guns. Box of Guns is closing in on him very closely. He wants to get behind these PD. That overcharge into Kane Danker is not doing him any favors. Sub 3,000 hit points. Box of Gun is pristine at 11,500 hit points. Dropping below 2k. Gets a rank in veterancy. A very crucial one here. Allows him to rep up more hit points per second. There are some units into the east here for the player of Box of Guns. But unfortunately here was not able to secure the kill. And there are incoming units from Team 2 to intercept the units here from Team 1. More of a distraction more than anything else. Pulling off the... You know, reinforcements at the front line for Team 2, allowing Team 1 to get a little bit of a break. Because you can see Team 2 is starting to make their way over that midpoint of the map, at least in the middle and the south. We do see those forces inching their self closer and closer to Team 1's line here. Mech's Offender is about to encounter Orb's Commander. With a lot of Team 1 facilities online, so a lot of hit points to chew through for that Commander. Has his F amp on it. Of course, has the overcharge ability as long as they have. I think it's more than 4,000 e-storage on hand. Well, it depends on how much e-storage they have, but I know you have to have a minimum of one e-storage built in order to have enough energy to pro like produce an overcharge. So 
you know, something to uh, think about. You gotta remember to have overcharge, especially if your commander's on the front line to get a nice, nice boost in damage. Doesn't happen all the time, of course. You gotta wait for the engine to rebuild and whatnot, but of course it is a nice uh, ability to take out a group of either engineers or units or whatever the case may be, or just do a lot of damage to the calm. But we are seeing the land factories being slowly whittled down here by Team 2's play of Orb. There are, T, there are two T2 PD online here for Rex. Max Offender Corsair is coming in and help take out the second Utashala. T1 PD being spammed up to just shove the calm of Orb away. Is doing a decent job of it, but you know it's not really getting the work done. It's more of just like, hey, just don't come here. And he's like, okay, I'll just go around or I'll go somewhere else. We see T2 on the cards here for Orb as well. We're seeing those T2 engineers starting to start roam the map, maybe build some PD as well. Of course, he is UEF, so he'll probably build those pillars. Maybe, maybe he'll build monkeys. Uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, depends how they're used. I'm assuming he'll probably just stick with pillars for now, but who knows? He is a 2100. We are seeing missiles as well, some flapjacks, so that will help assist with some sieging capabilities on that middle s south middle section of the map. Units coming in from Regamex Offender in the rear here. Team 2's play of Orb was doing a similar movement, but it does look like Team 1 won that fight for now. Does look like Han Solo pressuring the eastern side here against Box of Guns, wanting to at least kick off Box of Guns from surrounding this pond here. He did build a T1 facility, upgrading to T2. It is stopped. Apparently, it doesn't want to produce a huge issue for his eco for you know scaling that uh, upgrade up very quickly but you know has it like on cue it's like one of like the list of things he wants to watch or do and he's just kind of just sitting there for now in terms of eco currently team one in the lead by about seven eight mass per second not really a huge issue totals five thousand again those two numbers in terms of discrepancies isn't a huge issue it only becomes an issue when there's 50, 100, 250, a million sort of mass difference between a few players. But just because you are behind that much mass does not mean you still can't win because games are not won just by mass alone, but by strategy, tactics, gut, luck, all that sort of thing. Han Solo is starting to look a little worse for wear. He's sub 75% of his hit points in the yellow. He has gun and he has speed and range. Box of Guns has a no upgrade but of, you know, of any sort, and so... Hansel will be able to retreat quite nicely, but of course, it is essentially a one and a half versus one here. The calm of Signal Runner is under a shield next to his teammate of Chuckle Buns. They've pushed forward quite heavily. Of course, one player in the rear here for Team One. It is the 800 of Cool Hand Luke, and he's going for T3 land, which is interesting because he's in the rear. But Team One does have access to T3 air technology. So does Team Two. They both have access to that very wonderful technology of strap bombers, ASFs, and gunships. Unless you're Seraphim and you don't have T3 gunships, so yeah. Probably just see the Seraphim for not having gunships. But you do get a you know the T4 Awasher bomber, so I hope that kind of you know, that kind of makes up the difference. But Han Solo is still trying to pressure his opponent. A lot of Zui in this mix. Han Solo has to keep moving or suffering a bunch of artillery pressure. You know, getting get shot at a lot essentially or get hit, he is getting shot at currently. But it does look like bombing runs constantly here for Team 1's play of Sigma Winner. Just being annoying, just going after units that can't fire back, units that aren't protected with AA. It does look like it is a combined effort here by Team 2 to try to push northward. We even see the calm of Raw Legit from all the way in the south move to at least assist with reclaim or maybe build some T2 facilities to help producing those Ilshis. That is so very, very annoying. We do see Box of Guns trying to just hide behind his facility. He's probably wishing he had an upgrade at the moment. And that range upgrade for Han Solo making it very difficult to hide his units. But of course, the closer Han Solo moves in, the closer Box of Guns can enter and come and intercept. Overcharge just takes out an Ilshi. That's got to hurt. Ilshis, of course, like I said, are very annoying. And being able to take those out without very much uh, issue is always, always a good idea. We even have the calm of Ares to the west assisting his teammate of Orb trying to just eliminate this position against the players of Reg. And we even see Chuckle Buns coming to assist. 
units in from the west, from the east coming in to attack this production facility. And a lot of units here just kind of hanging out. We do see Mongi, so it does look like Orb did go for that range advantage. And these units here aren't doing anything. They could overwhelm at least the Mongi's at least, but uh, I think Max Offender has other things he's currently working on. He's kind of a little distracted with a comm and actually two comms and a couple of missiles bearing down on him. Bombers trying to do what they can to delay the, you know, buildup of missile launches, but isn't really going very well. To the east, we have Han Solo in the green once again. We have Overcharge coming into his chassis. That isn't really good for your health, though. You do uh, deal with that. Han Solo getting a little tripped up here, but is able to retreat quite nicely. Drops back into the yellow, but does have three ranks of efficiency versus Box of Guns. One, he has more hit points a second, like regen and total. Hit points at 14,000 versus the 12.6 thousand. It is 15 minutes so far in this game. We are having units coming in from the east here from the player of Box of Guns. It does look like Ken, Ken Danker, if I can ever say his name right the first time, is building a nice firebase up here. He's doing what UEFs do. He's turtling. He's being annoying. He's saying, you can't crack the base. Good luck. And Team 1's going to say, no, I'm going to try, and then say, nah, it's probably not going to work. Mexes need to be rebuilt, though, but at least that position is held together with duct tape and super glue. And, of course, WD-40, because you're always going to have some of that on hand at all times. Box of Guns just trying to do what he can to pressure Han Solo. He just doesn't have the range in order to do so, especially if Han Solo goes for that advanced range. He will be able to shoot first, most likely. But, of course, that was changed as uh, later iterations of Star Wars will show Greedo shot first, but the original Han shot first, and Han will always shoot first. That's just who he is. We have missiles over the middle for Team 1 going after mass assassinations. And there he goes, landing next to that T2 mix. They'll kill that six mass a second, wiped off the face of the Earth for now. Does look like a two calm movement is going on for Chuckle Buns versus Or PD has been built behind to help assist with Orb's retreat. Lasers on the way for Ares. He has gun currently. We have bombers over the top going after engineers. Nice, nice uh, bombing run there. Takes out almost all of the build power there. Bombers coming in to assist, taking out PD now. Orb looking a little worse for wear. So is Mex, and of course, so is uh, Chuckle Buns. He is in the yellow. We have interceptors protecting those bombers. They're doing a great job. They're going after the, I don't know what they were going after there, the Mexes? I don't know. Laser's still, you know, going to take a while. How is Ares Eco? I don't think it's doing very well. It doesn't have really a lot of mass to spend. doesn't have the energy. I mean, he has some, but not a lot. He's got to get some build power on. That's going to take him another four minutes to complete it. I don't think it's going to complete, sadly, because one comm is going to push in, go after Ares, and it's not going to bode very well him for him if he doesn't end up moving. T2AA from the cruisers also equipped are the missile launchers very similar to the covenant class targeting air units well you know if you can't take them out with a uh, you know surface to air missile you can at least take them out from a surface to surface missile in the form of those tactical missiles so good on the cruiser for keeping it in the family with the type of weaponry and of course the ship that could take out air units of course we are seeing the calm of can hand danker still will not be able to say his name right the first time Always takes me a second to reset what I'm saying. Still pushing. That cruiser is going to still be annoying, and I think more going to be built all the time, of course, because why the heck not lock out air on the northeast section of the map? Always a good idea. Those look like units are just going to build up here in the pond here for Team 1's player of book Box of Guns, and we've almost hit the 20-minute mark before somebody has died, but I might be regretting those words here. Mex is out in the open, and there's another bomber en route. And there are some Othams as well. He needs to dodge the Othams or he might just die here. He dodges some of them. Dodges most of them. Only one really connects. He needs to get under that shield coverage. Will he make it? He is close. He is sub at 36, sorry, 4,000 hit points. We even have Chocobuns, you know, really suffering here. Mex does get taken out. And, of course, the words that I say bite me in the butt. It is before 20 minutes. And the highest rated player on Team 1 is killed by the second highest rated player on team two and the third highest rated player in the game overall. And now it is in the favor of team two at five V four. Does look like Chocobuns will inherit that which once belonged to Mex Offender. Of course, it does make sense. He is on the front line, but lots of units just have 
pummeled the entire western side of Team One's front line. They've almost embedded themselves in what was once, I think this was uh, Meg's base? Mex no, Mex's base was back here. Right? Or Chuck the Buns was. Uh, anyway, doesn't matter. He still owns both, he owns both bases now. To the east, more cruisers starting to just peripherate here. Be very annoying for this base here to the east. There needs to be triple the amount of SM, not SMD, TMD to really deal with this. He did. Ken Dinker just said, I'm going to reclaim because why not? The mass will be reclaimed here for Box of Guns. He did get some cruisers out of the mix, but uh, didn't get as many as he probably would have wanted to. Han Solo surrounding with some units, some obsidians. Love to see those. Shields, love to see those. And using the Aurora range to deal with engineers on reclaim orders. Of course, they need some, you know, momentum here at least on some point of the map a lot of engineers being built here by rob legit i wonder what he's doing i really don't know but we'll have to see as time goes on chuckle buns messed up says uh yeah chuckle buns to his allies mix says rip gg that was rude orb says <laughs> mix uh quite so i mean eh, sometimes it's rude but you just got to get the job done laser at 83 percent completed aries wrapping up back to Full HP, and of course the calm in the water for Can Dink er, is suffering due to the torpedoes and units coming in. Amphibious tanks at the bottom of the water. Well, I, guess, oh, I thought they hovered. I guess not. I, they, they are back. Okay, never mind. For some reason I thought Wagner's floated on the water, but apparently they did not. The only... Wait, does Cybern units not float at all? I don't think they float at all. Huh. Anyway, we have engagements here to the west. Han Solo being supported by actually not being supported being surrounded by titans from team one but they're not targeting han solo they're targeting his support units first and he is being surrounded here on the west of course we see ken danker does make it out of the water you know not dead but pretty close to dead and han solo is surrounded five star veterans he d the range doesn't really work if you can't sit at range two times firing into his back a third one to his wet to his south his south or north and he is not long for this world he's just going to sit and take as many units out with him as he can he can't get any more veterancy so no more additional hit points takes out one titan takes out another titan and he will not make it out of their cup boom takes out all t1 units t2 uh of course there comes into assist and now it is a 4v4 team one end up getting a kill their first on han solo that has got to hurt being the first one on your team killed, especially with a name like that. T2 Ilshis, again, just the awesome firepower, fire rate, annoyingness of the Ilshi to the north. T2 already, the HQ, says Max. Um, I don't know about that. Maybe? Oh. I mean, yeah, that might work, but there's a lot of missiles, so maybe not. Those Ilshis are able to withstand that push out from Kandanker to the east. And it's not looking good here, folks, in the East for Team 2. They're starting to lose a lot of territory, but they've gained a lot of territory to the West. So with one side falls, the other side rises, essentially, to compensate. But all those missiles inbound here against Chuckabuns cannot do a lot. The Utashalas are the main target here for the missiles, but once the missiles get a new target, that artillery is not going to go anywhere. And Strap Bombers over the top going after Chuckabuns directly once again. Shields are down. He needs to retreat, needs to get out of there. The bomber does get taken out, but he is severely wounded. A little bit above 50% of those hit points and has a nice regen going on at 20 hit points a second. Does have the missile, doesn't have the tactical nuke. He want to build the tactical nuke is early, but Titans inbound from his teammate of Cool Hand Luke, pummeling at these T2 flapjacks. Is supporting with his own Thams as well and Zui, of course. And those Titans are getting pummeled by the mongies here but they have taken a decent amount of them but they've just now been replaced by the spearheads but when you know one head appears two more takes its place kind of thing and we have some courses inbound targeting chuckle buns to the west we have t2 noth is inbound for rob legit and there is some flak in the area to help protect they're just suffering here all those nothas don't target the calm for some reason but don't know why that was the case but anyway more Corsairs are inbound. I wouldn't be surprised to see. There is another Strat Bomber built up. He wants to wait and see. Can he get the comm alone? We have one artillery built up. I don't think that's going to work against the Percy's coming in. There are Lion Titans in this mix, of course, but the missiles will kill off 
that artillery sooner or later. There is a second one to the west, and it does look like Team 2 is starting to retreat a little bit. Cloaking on the way here for Ares has Nano. There's going to be a very you know, quiet, invisible boy running around the map with a giant chest laser. Not like Team 1's not going to see that or anything. But, you know, you can't see him directly unless you have Omni over top, which at this stage you're going to have Omni at some point unless Team 2 can lock it out. We'll see. That's Drop Bomber. It is inbound, and it's going for that comm. That comm is retreating. ASF's moving in to intercept any inbound air pressure, and that bomb, that bomber, that comm is alone. Bomber drops his first one, drops his hit points below 6,000. Bomber does fall. Though, so, you know, just annoying all backpack with when it's uh, not dark outside orb. I'll be back. Lol. Alright. Uh, I don't know if he's if uh, Mex is saying he's playing at night, and a lot of these games happen at night, which amazes the you know crap out of me that you get, that a lot of players can play at you know one, two, three, four o'clock in the morning, and still play for an hour plus and like not be insane, it and still have some of their sanity left. It just amazes me. I can't do that. I mean, I could probably play till like one or so, but then my brain is just tapped out. It's like no, you need sleep. You need you know just. Get some water, go to bed. And you can't stay up that late playing, you know, a very taxing mental game like this. Like, you could play, like, Solitaire or something that doesn't take a lot of brain power. But this takes a lot. So it just, you know, just everyone in the game that plays late at night, you guys are just the real unsung heroes of Fab, keeping the game alive constantly, even at all the wee hours of the early morning or late night, depending on your view of things. And it is 25 minutes, or almost 26 minutes at that point. Let's take a look at Eco really quick. Team 2 at 8. Oh, well, not, hold on. It keeps uh, energy issues maybe at that. Let's just say 9.50. Call it, eh. Yeah, just call it 9.50 versus 6. And, uh, let's say 700. So Team 2 vastly in the lead with mass per second. Team 2 starting to pull away at 20,000 mass. More accrued than their opponents. The comm of Rawlegit is starting to be fired upon by some loyalists to the west that have come all the way from Signal Runner, but he's able to retreat behind friendly units, so he's not really in danger of dying as of yet. But let me see what you guys think about who's going to currently win. It is 4v4 at 26 and a half minutes. Please like the video. Comment down below what you guys' thoughts are, and of course hit that sub button if you already haven't done so already. RAS has been completed here for Cool Hand Luke. I was about to say it was, and then it was at 99%. The T2 naval facility has been rebuilt by the player of Box of Guns. He wants to pummel this position, and, you know, there's really only TMD left, so he's doing a great job of that. He needs, like, four more cruisers, though. Two things you always need. Cruisers, so a AA or missile launchers, what the case may be, and shields. Cannot have enough of either of those. Because if you can lock out air, that's an entire field of combat that is just null and void. If you have all the AA in the world and all the shields to protect all the AA in the world, the only thing that can really kill you are artillery and nukes. Anything on the ground. So you got to think about the, the, the ground warfare as well. But the Calm of Ares with the Cloaked Commander is coming into... Oh, is this going to be a... Oh, oh no, it is a teammate of Orb. I thought that was Chocobox for a second. I'm like, oh, it's going to be a snipe by a... A uh, Cybern Commander, but that is Orb. That is a teammate. He will not do that. And the units in from Orb are pushing in to Chocobuns' front line here that has been severely pushed back. Team 2 is really doing a great job on this western side. Has some of uh, these Nothas in the rear for some bomber capabilities here. Pushing against the build power. T3 facility is under threats. And this nice army that's very shielded up has AA, has, you know, rapid fireness, and has single fire damage, has missiles, has, you know, AA. I would like to see a cougar in there. Oh, there is a cougar in there. Never mind. It has essentially everything. I would like to probably see some T2 pillars just for more, like, you know, essentially bullet sponges at this point. But I guess the Percy's kind of fill that role a little bit with the, you know, two-star veteran C Percival at 8,600. We start first of all at 96 and 9800. That's a lot of uh, veterancy on those units. They usually die very quickly. And it does look like there is starting to be a push against the units here in the middle for Team 1. Team 2 starting to enclose their enemy, cutting off the entire middle except for this northeastern side. The saving grace for Team 1 is, of course, the awesome job that's being done by Box of Guns, essentially tying up one player so far. 
but it does look like a lot of his units are moving into the west noticing this side is going to fall pretty soon sooner rather than later kind of thing but we have the calm of Ares just going to charge into that main base see what he can get done i don't think team one has spotted him as of yet oh no nope, no no they see him on radar i think he was just is he in line with the omnis where's the omni no that's t2 he has cloaking on so he did no, it shouldn't have been only been spotted. Hold on. Let me go back and see what they can see again. No, they can see the comm. There must be an Omni station online that I just don't see. You would think it'd be right here, but it's not. That's T2. And watch the Omni. Oh, it's right here. Let's take a look at that rain. Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah, I see the... Well, they can see him. He's right over here. They just can't see exactly what he is. And once you get spotted, that comm is going to die. ASS for Team 2. There is a nuke being launched here by Cool Hand Luke, and he went for nuke rush. Team 2, are you prepared? And it depends on what you're going for. The main base of uh, Orb is like non-existent. We have the air grid not defended. We don't have any SMD on the field currently, so this nuke is going to be free. It's going for the air grid. That's a great play by Cool Hand Luke, eliminating the air pressure here from their opponent. Great, great move, and of course they're building a T3, sorry, a T4 uh, washer bomber, so if they can kill that off, or at least prevent some of its building, that's obviously going to break. There it goes. How much core mass is it going to get? Going to get all but two of it, and some engineers do get singed in that explosion. A couple of facilities still online, but it's severely crippled Team 2's air presence. That's such a great move. Good job here from Cool Hand Luke, the 800 for Team 1. And that laser is pushing forward. They have noticed him. Maybe he's run out of power? Oh, he's run out of power. Okay, I was like, why aren't you engaging? He doesn't have enough power to sustain the cloak. Oh, there he goes. He's fixing it. Okay. I was like, you should have enough power. Pushing forward. Team 1 knows there's a cloaked cyber commander with the laser. They need to deal with this. Units incoming from the western side against Team 1's position for a box of guns. He's dealing with this. There is a Percy in the mix, but that has been dealt with, so just a couple of obsidians left standing. That pings go down against Ares, of course. Units are retreating all the time. We have units in the rear here for Orb, just kind of dealing with all the eco. And look at this. Look at the ecos. Team 2 at 649. Team 1 at 524. They have dropped severely for both teams. And, of course, the loss of this position, of course, with mass points constantly being raided, constantly being destroyed. There is a fat boy to the east, and that comm does get noticed by Team 1 of finally, and it is killed off the comm of Cool. Actually, Cool Hand Luke gets the credit for that kill with his uh, Percy's, but Chocobuns was in there, and he was singed a little bit, but not too badly. Units in from Orb will be pushed back. A lot of them are now just... AA or shields, but there's a couple of uh, Percy's up here, and they're going after the east storage here for Chuckle Buttons, so not really a whole lot of uh, east storage here for this guy. And a look at the mass assassination. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's so many mass points that are just up for grabs at the current moment. We have some broadswords being used to just deal with these Percy's, and this nuke, the second one, is almost loaded. Team 2, how are you doing on SMDs? Nope. Uh, there's one here. Not loaded, though. That'd be a great one here to just, you know, produce orb. T3 air facility being built. That'd be a nice one as well. This position is has an SMD, is not loaded, so it will not be loaded in time. So Team 1 gets another free nuke in with no issues, essentially. essentially. And you can see the range that I was talking about earlier in the beginning of the cast. They can hit the green. I, th I don't think the lasers can hit this position well maybe they well let's see they're able to make it to at least the green line i think they can hit the yellow line i don't think so though i don't i don't know about that but a lot of them you know aren't sitting on the edge and if there's just a monkey that comes in or something that kills them all off that would work quite nicely for team two but they have other issues they have other things working on a lot of effort is being pushed on this western side of things and now it's switched from essentially a diagonal sort of game with team one occupying the northwest and team two occupying the southeast it's essentially team one's on the north half and team two's on the southern half and team one unfortunately gets the shorter end of the stick with the mass points because yeah they have a group up 
three up here, but team two gets this one and this one and, you know, all of this mass that should essentially be in team one's hands is now in team two's. I hear a strat bomber. I just don't, I think I hear a strat bomber, but I just don't see it. Oh yeah, there's some units inbound here from the player of Cool Hand Luke going after some mass assassinations against Orb, and we have strat bombers dealing with those. There's another bomb, drops nice grouping there, takes out a lot of hit points for those titans targeting the next one. They should be targeting this one because it's closer. But, uh, and it has less hit points, but it doesn't really matter now. And Cougar's providing some air defense. Need to get that a little bit more southward, but that second bomb will drop and take out the quad, the tri formation. Almost 100 mass, 100 mass target. There you go, nice, getting three core mass out of that deal. Great move by Cool Hand Luke, just assassinating a lot of mass for Team 2. And look at the mass per totals. Team 2 still on the lead because I think they fixed some power issues is probably what it was. The transfer of control from Orb to LeBron, legit. Wait, that was... What's going on there? Oh, I guess he just... If, wait, what's Orb doing? Maybe he just transferred over so he can micro other things a lot more efficiently. But Team 1 is not out of this let. 34 minutes in. The game lasts a little over an hour. Fatboy has a shield. Looked like it didn't have a shield, but a lot of eh, TMD. A lot of TMD being built. How's that sick and nuke coming? Well, it should be loaded. It is loaded, and if he wants to use it, he needs to load it now. That SMD is not loaded. This would be a great grab by Team 2. And I know that, oh sorry, by Team 1. Team 1 would love to probably get this position as well, but that SMD is almost finished loading. So I'd say either target the air grid or slash RASCOM production in the rear or go after the base here against Can Danker. And I feel like that's a better grab. The SMD is not going to be loaded anytime soon. You should be fine to fire at least one. I don't know why he's waiting. He target mechs, says Reg. Oh, target the mechs. Team 2 actually expanding, getting T3 mechs pretty far Strategic forward. And sitting where they are, the nuke is launched. Where is it going? Oh, and it's going to this position, but the SMD has been loaded. Though he waited a little too long, unfortunately. Should have targeted the player of Kandanka. But if he loads the second nuke quickly... He could get that position, but I just feel like you could get this position. You would essentially, hit, you know, knock out another player for Team 2, focus a little bit more effort on this Western side, because this is a huge threat for Team 1. Look at all that land. Oh, I thought the game froze. Look at all that land mass that just is under Team 2's control. They need to deal with that sooner than later. A huge spy plane effort to see what's going on. That'll give it some intel for Cool Hand for some nice uh, targets to shoot and go after after he is done with that nuke, which obviously doesn't fire. It does look like, uh, it doesn't look like there's any really eff other effort to do any more SMD, you know, mass loading, which we have Percy's the primary focus here for Orb. We have some artillery bases and obviously the fire base in the west, We or sorry, east in the west. We have units being built up by Orb, but look at this. Look at all the huge territory lines that Team 1 has to deal with. You know, they can't consolidate units in some sort of like kill box or anything. They really just have to deal with a heck of a lot of things. And I love this. Look at this. It looked like a pillar which is hanging out over outside of the shields. And every missile was going after this because they're not being microed as well. So that means all those shots that, you know, potentially hit shields, potentially hits other things, are actually missing because they're targeting a pillar, which for that kind of mass, you know, cost it really is a nice distraction. How's that nuke going? That's really the, you know, Team 1's main driving force that is loaded. If he wants to fire it, now is the time. This position still doesn't have an SMD loaded. This position doesn't even have an SMD to speak of. And this position no longer has an SMD loaded. And he could get the calm of Orb with this if he decides to land it here. That'd be a huge turn of events here for Team 1. That nuke needs to land now. Not two minutes from now, not 30 seconds from now, right now, or even yesterday. Land it yesterday. Land it before they showed up like a landmine. They just step on the landmine, the nuke goes off, everything explodes. A really, really devastating landmine. To the east, of course, the missiles, you know, starting to fail, but we see volcanoes, and that is a huge benefit here for the player of Kandinka. But we have broadswords being brought forth to just go after the bat boy, and there's a lot of AA, surprisingly, so... The shields are going to start to fall, and the fat boy is the main target. Maybe there's some land invasion possibly in, you know, working for Team 1. 
but they will get that fat boy with little to no cost for those broadswords. I'd say that's a heck of a value for your mass. Signal Runner still being a thorn in orb side. We do see the fat boy is severely damaged. Does look like, well, that was where a calm died, so I don't know why it's so severely damaged. Maybe there is a monkey. The monkey couldn't have done that, though. I don't see any wrecks in the area, so it probably was something else that looks like. What is up with this random buildup of engineers by Raw Legit? I don't know why that just occurs, but it just happens for him. Fat Boy targeting the monkey now. We have a bunch of Titans just kind of sitting, hanging out. Percy's targeting that Fat Boy. Percy's chasing down the. Sorry, Percy's chasing the monkey. Fat Boy chasing the monkey. It looks like the main force was the distraction while the secondary force goes after anything of value targeting it. You know, Sam sites targeting defenses, targeting the, you know, suits there, the radar generating facility. Great, great structure. Gives you vision, which is amazing. Lots of, uh, lots of knowledge is gained. Just, just the vision. I mean, it's nice to just see it because, you know, when we w watch the cast, we have full vision. We have full knowledge. But when you play like this sometimes, having a huge circle of just vision is kind of nice. Not to lie, it's kind of nice to have that. Units incoming here. The fat boy has been dealt with. They're trying to target. Sorry, the monkey has been dealt with. The fat boy trying to run away. It will not be able to be killed off for now. Units coming in for cool hand. He still has that nuke launcher. It is loaded. The second one, actually, second one in the clip, is uh, you know almost unloading. This SMD does reload. He he had a chance. He didn't use it when he had the chance, and as we say, you gotta ha you gotta use the up. Oh wait, where is he firing this one? He's not firing in here. This SMD is loaded as well, almost loaded. Where is it going? It's going for this position. The SMD was built but isn't loaded, and that's gonna get the Rascom producing facility. It's gonna get the Megalith, the Com of Canned Anchors nearby. It's not gonna get him, but it's definitely gonna be like ah, it's gonna freak him out a little bit seeing that nuke. Come overhead. Ah, oh, such a missed opportunity. Two bases that could have been destroyed and just goes for something else, which is fine. At least you're getting some mass, you know, value out of your missiles, but still there's more valuable things that could have been destroyed. There it goes. Kaboom. The worst looking nuke in the game. Lots of PGens goes down. The SMB, frankly enough, is not destroyed, so that's some consolation prize, but uh, not not a great consolation prize to be honest. Team 1 now establishing a nice front line, trying to just patch some holes, while Team 2, well, Orb, essentially, expands very much into this entire southwest section of the map. Just look at it. Both the orange players control, I'd say, 50% of the map themselves between the rush player of Box of Guns and the orange, the color orange player of Orb in the southwest, and, of course, a little bit in the south, of course, with his original base, which I've noticed, which is very interesting. I've noticed this. Higher ranked players, they usually you build like one or two facilities and then you just leave. And then you build the front line, then you come back and build more. He doesn't even care. He's like, yeah, this core mass back there, yeah, I don't care. This is my front line. This is my main base. And what that essentially does is you use your main base as a buffer for your secondary base versus it being the other way around. And so maybe, you know, sometimes that's a good strategy, sometimes it isn't. But in this case, it is definitely working here for Orb. There's more AA presence now to take out these uh, these broadswords, but the SMB is going to die nonetheless, targeting very nicely here for his teammate of Cool Hand Luke. We have the Monkey Lord being annoying, drawing out forces, trying to just annoy Team 2. Those missiles coming in all the time. They've dealt a huge damage to those uh, lines of, t of TMD. But of course, I don't think it's going to be enough. Once that nuke launches, it's not going to feel good. That nuke has been loaded. The SMD is gone. Sooner than later, their uh, cool hand, you need to launch that. They're just having a strategy meeting up there. You need the calm of cool uh, chuckle buns and signal run and have a nice little you know, group meeting to talk about what's going on. Again, not the best idea to sit comms side by side. It's such a tight area. Bombing runs come in. The nuke comes in. Not not the best feeling when you have multiple, like essentially a double to triple kill. Not, not the best feeling. Doesn't happen a lot. Still does happen, you gotta be aware of that. The nuke is not landing in this position. Where is it landing? Not in this position, where is it going? It's landing in this position, it's just saying no. It's, <laughs> it's telling Raw Legit, you cannot build anything here. You don't own anything here. You will not own anything here. And where's the nuke? Oh, there it is. I'm staring in front of my face. 
And, uh, it's, you know, especially with the broadswords went in to try to assassinate, you know, this position would have gotten the comms with that too. It's just such a missed opportunity. It is a 4v3 in favor of Team 2, but of course Team 2 is leading the mass totals and uh, mass per second. There it goes. Going to kill a lot of engineers again. Takes out almost all of them. The SMD is gone. I don't think that was really worth one nuke, unfortunately. Kills some more mass for Team 2, but honestly, uh, that one wasn't as good as the other two that have landed so far. So could have been could have been a lot better. Some Rascoms have already been built and are starting to run around the map. I mean, I would have even gone after this, but the SMD was built and loaded, so th this is the position that really needed it. I mean, it would have done a huge amount of work for Team 1's other teammates, or, sorry, Cool Hand Luke's other teammates by taking out at least most of this. All the A lot of the units would have been killed off. Hegens would have been killed off. The T3 land headquarters would have been killed off. You know, a lot of damage could have been done to Kandanker, but just, it, it's there in front of his face. He's just not doing it. It's frustrating. Two fat boys being targeted by broadswords. And the ASF fight isn't going to happen. Team 2 definitely has the advantage, but doesn't want to use it. We have some AA coming in to assist, but the broadswords are probably going to get a kill, which, I mean, didn't even need to happen. Uh, they, well, yeah, they I think they will get the kill here on the fat boy. They could have prevented it. Definitely a disappointment there by Ra the Jet. There was a nice opportunity. He does kill off the rest of those broadswords, but could have probably saved the fat boy of orb. Definitely a missed opportunity there. More broadswords being built. That nuke still, you know, still loading. There's been no attempt by Team 2 to try to destroy it, which is kind of surprising. But the land invasion that you see now occurring could have been a lot better had uh, Team 1's play of Cool Hand Luke just nuked most of that position. Again, missed opportunity. I'm not trying to grill him for it, but again, just missed opportunity, especially when your teammate takes out the SMD in particular to assist. But will the monkey get close enough to the satellite station to take it up? The shield is down. The lasers target it and doesn't kill it off and had about a little half health left remaining. Optum's running the front line. That chicken, sad to say it, the chicken needs to just go, you know, point, click, die is essentially what's going to happen to that chicken. Is all the t all the PD is going to target that chicken? A nice um, AOE explosions from multiple guns. It's going to just run over everything. I think that's what's happening. Good. Uh, yep. He's just doing point, click, move, see whatever it kills off. Because even if it dies, if it dies right here, it's perfect. But the first satellite will be taken out. The second one that's almost being finished off. That one will die. It was completed and then dies immediately. That's gotta hurt. Takes out the T3 land headquarters, and that, my friends, is a good place, chicken, even if it dies. Which, at least take out the facility, please. Take out the Omni. At least make sure you take out those targets. The P Gens, that's a good target. It's going to land. It's going to kill the Omni on top of it with the explosion of the uh, Ion Storm, of course. There it goes. And the base is just going to be ripped to shreds. The T3 land headquarters definitely is the thing that. Uh, Team one's player of uh, Box of Ground really wants it to take out. But unfortunately, I mean, the Pigeons would have been a nice target, of course, but mm, kind of a missed opportunity. The SMD, you know, is almost gone again. And then that, uh, that headquarters is really just feeling it here. Now oh, that Pigeon's almost gone. 1,000 hit points, 1,100 hit points. Oh, it's going to be close. Nope, and it doesn't go away. Very, very sad here for that uh, Ion Storm not killing off that headquarters. But the missile's still raining in constantly. They, I mean, maybe even building a battleship, just one, just to pummel something else. But I don't know. There's a lot of effort to use that, I that island, that pond, but uh, this isn't really getting a lot of value out of it, sadly. And now we have a satellite for Orb. That's not going to feel good here for Team 1. Their uh, nuclear deterrent has a loaded missile, but... Uh, not really a lot of targets to go after now. You could still go after this position. The SMD was you know, just rebuilt. But this is going to have a missile loaded. The detected. nuke does launch. Where is it going? It is going for... That's an attack order. That I don't know. Orb has built an experiment, so it's probably not a satellite. No, it's a fat boy. And he has his own nuke launcher now. But it's covered by SMDs, so going to be fine for now. It's actually going to land here and not really get a whole lot of it. We'll get a fat boy. 
we'll get a couple of Rask. Uh, maybe those are Rambo preset commanders. I couldn't tell. It, I mean, it's a defensive nuke. It's not bad. And it's not great either. You know, w Cool Hand Luke had really good early nukes, and then later on, not really going well. Kane Dinker says, I'm going to give you everything raw legit. You can use the mass and everything a lot better than I can. Maybe we'll see a control case sooner than later. I expect it, but it's not going to happen. It's one of those, oh, I see the message. Oh, okay, that's, you know, it was to be expected. Team 1 still has four players left standing. They lost mechs early on, and that is it. The satellite going after the air grid. They're going after, well, Chuckle Buns has started a satellite and decided against it. Cool Hand Luke isn't really scaling. His eco only has 150 mass per second. He needs more. Um, build some Rascoms would be probably the thing that I would do. He's just trying to speed build that nuke. But eventually, you just get diminishing returns because it's cheaper to build SMDs. And you can build them essentially fa You can build them faster depending on the build power. And you just got to gotta do one different strategy, which, you know, churning out some Percy's and throwing them at the front line for assistance. Great strategy as well, just assisting your team where you can. Kind of would like to see Cool Hand kind of, you know, go into just more eco. You know, he's building a lot of uh, engineers, but uh, it's not, they're not doing anything. They're just kind of sitting there. You know, gate in some support commanders, be able to scale that eco more, build a artillery, build something. But those missiles, so it is the yellow line from the earlier conversation, from the conversation from earlier, it is the yellow line. That is how far he can shoot, which is, you know, more than half the base, which is a decent chunk. But the more important structures are in the rear. We have one satellite online. More land facilities going to be pumping out either units or engineers. Well, yeah, they're probably going to be punching out engineers, I would assume. But there is a satellite under the control of Canned Anchor. We have a, a Megalith walking around next to him. But Team 2 not being as aggressive as they once were, being a lot more patient, being a lot more, um, pers not precise, but a lot more, what's the, uh, not choosy, there's another word for it, very um, particular, ah, that's the word for it, with what they do, at least in terms of orb, he's not just shoving everything forward, he's suffering some P-Gen issues, yeah, he has no energy, so there's no shields on those fat boys, a perfect, perfect opportunity for those art you know those uh, gunships to come in and just wreck those fat boys they have no shields that's 20,000 hit points that is gone the re the shield regens you can see it does orb have the power he still does not he has some in the clip uh okay he's starting to get it situated so it, there was an opportunity he lost the opportunity and you don't see this every day you have shield presets on these ra these SACUs essentially they're just a bubble shield a very beefy one. 50, 52,000 hit points on a mobile shield. That is a lot. That's more. Sh that's two and a half times the amount of shielding that one fat boy gets. That is ridiculous. <laughs> Missiles coming in trying to target the fat boy. It doesn't really go very well. You know, these things are going to trundle on Strategic forward. Another nuke is launched. It's going for this position <laughs> once again. Raw legit cannot catch a break. And, man, that's just going to hurt. More Pigeons are going to die. Oh, might get a decent amount of Rascoms in that mix, but uh, we'll see if they sit there for long. The main facility is still online, of course, and will still be online. But there is some Ford. Oh, no, nope, there's some Ford SMDs. But he's protected. But, man, Cool Hand Luke has an out for Raw Legit this game. Jeez. That's the third nuke going to launch on the same position, two of which landed. One of them will not. We have a Megalith coming to deal with those Othams on that front line in the east. Four box of guns. Still a really weird name, but still a funny name. It's just, I'm just thinking about a box of guns and what kind of guns would be in that box and how big is the box and where is the box and why is there a box of guns and why aren't they in a, in a safe or yeah, their carry case or you know whatever you decide to display your guns in. And there goes that Megalith. It's going to die more kill. It's going to get more kills with its death than it will be when it was alive. Takes a huge amount of those tanks offline, especially I think there were some shields in there as well. I mean, there were some lightning tanks. Maybe that's what I saw. But that is, uh, it's, you know, all that mass dumped on Team 1's front door. Not a good sign. Not a, not a great, great sign. But at least, you know, when you're winning with 800,000 more mass than your opponent, and you're producing almost double the eco, the double the mass per second, you can throw away a 
the, the megalith once in a while. Not all the time, but, you know, once in a while. Like every 10 minutes or so. I'd say that's not super... Well, 15 minutes. It's 15 minutes. Well, you know, not unreasonable. We have a satellite moving around the map here for Team 1. Of course, there is a nuke down here for Orp. He's building a Maver. I see it. He's building it. Yes. Yes, finally. I haven't seen a Maver in ages. And it's being built, and it's in the green. It's very close. Orb, a man after my own heart, building the giant artillery of the game. Thinking of Guile's uh, comments about it. It is definitely uh, phallic in shape once it's fully uh, erect. And those are the only jokes I'm going to make about it in this cast. You get those two, that's it. So hopefully you enjoyed them. We have some lightning tanks taking out a lot of these. No, not the, I almost said authors. The author. Authors. Authors. There we go, that's an N. And those aren't going to get a second pass in, but they are charging forward for this position again. Team 1 has it out for Rob the Jit this game, but there's a lot of Rascoms here going to produce some chickens for defense. Offens inbound. He has T2. Noth is inbound to just deal with uh, the chicken. Looks like the... Oh, take out the SMDs. Oh, just skate by. Just ignore the chicken. There you go. No, no, no. no. It's right there. It, it, right there. Don't take out the... Oh, it's right there. Turn around, target. No, don't target the chicken. Target. Oh, such a. Oh, that's disappointing. Because if you take out the SMDs and you come in with the nuke, you take out everything else. That's how that works. Does Team 1 have one loaded? They do. We have Tactical Missile being built by Cool Hand Luke. That's not going to do anything from all the way back there, unfortunately. Unless he's going to be, you know, teleported. Not teleported, but uh, dropped down somewhere. It's really not going to do a whole lot all the way back there. Maybe he's thinking about taking out those fat boys. Maybe that's what he's thinking, but I don't know. I don't know if that's really the move here. The SMDs do get taken out, but the calm, the calm of Cantanker gets killed off by the Ion Storm of Box of Guns and the Nuke. I thought I saw a Nuke launching. Nope, the Nuke, Nuke, Nuke says Chuckle. Oh, I think he's talking about the Maver. The Maver has been deployed. It's been completed, and it's Artillery is positioning itself. It has to go, you know, fully extended and then has to do a s very short turn, very s actually very slow turn. And that is a lot of engineers, very reminiscent of a couple of videos ago where I just said, anybody want an engineer? And there's just a hundred plus engineers on screen because why not? Tactical Nuke was canceled by uh, Cool Hand Luke. GG says Chuckle, probably talking about the artillery. Yeah, he can see the Maver. Let's see, I wanna, I'm going to watch it fire. There it goes. It's firing with the laser over top. I'll see you a laser and raise you a maser. Sorry, a maver. Well, oh, that was uh, almost a... I don't know what dad joke I could say with that, but uh, there's a dad joke in there somewhere. I can just sense it. Should I get in ah, no, camera, stop it. I want to get a nice shot of this maver. There we go. Oh, that's not too bad. There it goes. And I'm very happy to see him. <laughs> and there you go. That's the title of uh, the, the thumbnail. Is uh, very happy to see you. Is that banana? Anyway, that's that's the last joke. That's the last joke. Anyway, we have the chicken to the east trying to protect. We even have some shield commanders coming in. Again, 52,000 hit points of shield with 150 hit points per second. That is just so many shields. So many. Lasers being used for defense, which you rarely see that these days. They're only really used for attacking. But satellite, you know, defense satellites being used for their nom nomenclature of defense instead of attack. But a group of broadswords are on their way. And uh, um, I think uh, I think you might have a problem. I think, Rob, that I uh, think you are seen. I think you're noticed. I think you're, I um, think that's not going to, it's not going to work. That's not going to work. And then they go. <laughs> and they're gone. And maybe there was a, there wasn't some sort of uh, diversionary tactic. It was just see, can you you know edge them around the map? Can't. We have a nuke. We have a satellite. We have artillery. The only thing we're missing here is either a you know a duke, or mm, I don't know what else would you be missing here. You just put an Atlantis in the middle of the desert. That'd be funny. Now I think that's essentially everything in terms of the you know very standard. Uh, land-based UEF tactics are artillery, nuke, satellite. That's very, very streamlined. That Maver is going after the comm of Chocobuns. Takes out a huge amount of T2 clank hammers. Man, that's got to hurt. 
Gonna build a shield on top of all those and hits. Did that shell hit a ASF? I think it did. I think a neighbor shell hit a ASF and Chuck a Bun's shield that comes on right just in time. Builds a second one for defense. He is still online. Another nuke is launched. It's gone. I think the satellites probably took them out. I don't know. I don't know what happened with that. I didn't see that. Apologies for that. A nuke is launched here from Team 2's play of Orb. Going for a signal runner and it is shot down. So that's not going to feel too great. But, you know, you did take out the enemy's nuke and you do have a Maver. So and I can feel good about that. Nice, nice air grid down here. Nice diamond formation here. Has an SMD in there as well. Building mass fab farms as we speak down south. There goes the Billy Nuke targeting the Fat Boys Billy Nukes. Go, I probably should move and then move. They back, they literally back up and move forward. We have another uh, missile inbound. Going to be, uh, there it goes, shot off. I think it's going to miss. No, oh, it's going to be pretty close. The shields have taken a hit. And Box of Guns Control Case thinks the game is over for his team. Decides to leave. The artillery is inbound. Oh, it was probably artillery. No, well, maybe it was. Yeah, maybe it was the maybe we're taking that out. And there it goes. It takes out both the fat boys. Great. Well, no. Yeah, it takes out both of them. Great positioning. Sorry, I don't mean to zoom in and out. Signal runner control case as well at 58 minutes. It's now a 2v2. We have units for signal runner coming in. They're going to stop. But the amount of ravagers is just so many. There's so many. And it's not going to work. The Maver was tasked to deal with those. That's funny. This position has very beefy. Will not uh, be broken. And see if that nuke had landed when it. I mentioned it earlier. This would have taken a lot longer to build up. So, again, missed opportunity. Nuke here coming in for Team 2. We have Strat Bombers kind of on the edges of the map. Large group of ASFs here for the player of Raw Legit. It's Orb, the highest rated players for Team 2 versus... The lowest rated player and the second highest rated player of Chuckle Buns. Looks like we have a nuke still sailing across the map. Is there an SMD? I don't think. No, there is. It's coming in from this base. There's still one more loaded. Looks like the ASFs are going to move in for just an operation of their own. We have some of these uh, Percivals going to come in. And I think these satellites are like, hey, there's some uh, bombers you should go after. I think that's what they're going after. They're going to chase him down. Lots of uh, AA opening up. The AA on those ambassadors. Not really that great. And there they go. Another one intercepted as well. And there's more up here to the east. They're just being hunted down by Team 2's air player of Raw Legit. And this game is, you know, we, we kind of know where this game is going. I'm going to speed it up just a tiny smidgen. Another Billy Nuke lands. Taking out whatever he can. We have that's where the calm of cool hand is. He's moved forward to help assist. And uh, he's just trying to do what he can. Another missile is going to be launched. Going after these uh, Percy's that are just grouping up here. And that's going to be a nice value for that one tactical nuke. There he goes. Huge group takes those out. Nice job. But an R washer over the top. Hold on. Let me slow this down. R washer lands on the shield. Or at least the bomb lands on the shield. Will impact again. Takes out the shield. Takes out stuff underneath it. Choco Buns is, you know, suffering. He doesn't really have a lot, le a lot left to live for. And <laughs> Cool Hand drops his tactical nuke. Misses. Hits the shield nearby. Probably tries to go after those Nathas. Satellite's not going to feel good on that skin of his. The shields are down around him. He doesn't have any protection. And he is going to die here very soon, leaving Chuckle Buns is the last commander left standing. There he goes, sub 2,000 hit points, sub 1,000, and he's gone. And now it's just Chuckle Buns. Nothas are inbound. Lots of AA trying to protect the commander, but I don't think it's going to matter. And he's dead. There he goes. Team 2 wins the game at 1 hour and 1 minute and some seconds left. That was a great game. We saw Maver. I haven't seen one of those in ages. It was used quite effectively. Not as effective as maybe I would like to see it. Being online, maybe another 10 minutes. But still, Orb pulled it out with the assistance. Well, I mean, both Orb and Rodigit did very well in this game. Orb took a huge section of the map away from Team 1. Took away a lot of their eco, their you know frontline, outlying eco. We have Rodigit just receiving 
you know, nuke after nuke after nukes, just could not catch a break. Cool Hand Luke did a very good job of, uh, you know, getting that early nuke out. He got a nice couple of plays out, but then eventually, you know, the enemy team was like, I should build SMDs. And then they do, and then the nuke advantage went away. And that's just kind of what happens sometimes. So, you know, when you do something, your opponent's going to counter it, and then you have to think, how do I counter that? And sometimes that is the key part is, okay, now I spent all this mass on this, you know, let's say artillery, and the enemy built a bunch of shields that I can't puncture. How do I take out the shields? Nuke would work, but they have an SMD. How do I take that out? So it's a lot of like, you know, th you know, rock, paper, scissors trying to counter one another out, but it's like 10 games of rock, paper, scissors at the same time. And some stuff can counter some stuff, and then it's just kind of a mess. Anyway, I think the uh, MVP for this game... Uh, I mean, I don't want to, you know, just give it to Orb because he built the Maver, and he did a very good job. Was constantly pressuring Team One. He did a great job in terms of MV, uh, uh, in terms of underrated player. I think Box of Guns deserved that. He did a great job just locking down Can Danker on the eastern side. He took the northeast corner. He used the pond, which I didn't think anybody would use, and did a great job of just constantly being annoying for uh, Can Danker here to the east. So I think. Most underrated play of the game goes to Box of Guns. You know, he did exit out, but you could tell what the writing on the wall was. You kind of knew what was going to happen. So, you know, he's, don't worry. You know, he's a uh, perfect, that was a perfectly fine move of just saying, game's over. I'm not going to worry about it. Let's go play another game kind of thing. And in terms of MVP, okay, MVP goes to Orb flat out. Oh, you know, my opinion, of course. You know, builds a Maver, builds a nice, strong base here pushes team one back very far essentially into their main base only and just essentially slowly just encloses around them and kills them off with that maver and assistance of course from rather jet with a lot of fighter and bomber support so again let me know down in the comments what you guys is feeling on my uh mvp and mud uh nominations and uh well not nominate yeah i guess nominations would be the word let me know down in the comments your feelings thoughts and uh questions please like the video if you did find that enjoyable and of course sub to the channel if you haven't done so already thank you so much for watching through the end of the video i know i can kind of ramble on sometimes throughout the cast and at the end but again thank you so much for listening and i will see all of you in the next one